Let's go! Mason Smith, defensive end, now that Andre Anthony is out for the season. Look, uh, this is a very interesting switch, but it's not something too out of the ordinary. So we're going to break down uh, quite a few plays from the second half. As many of you know, we already did the first half in a Corey Kiner film study for this week. I do think Mason Smith can actually play this defensive end role. Now, uh, you look at his high school film, oftentimes he was lined up over the offensive tackle anyway. Uh, where he played, played a traditional 3-4. So that's the first thing where, you know, Mason Smith oftentimes is already lined up over the offensive tackle. The second thing is uh, Mason Smith, when you actually see him play defensive tackle, he likes to line up in what I like to call a wider three technique. And hopefully we'll get to a snap where we can show you what that means. He didn't really get pancaked. He actually just lost his footing here. But this was a deep pass play. And uh, once again, this is going to be something LSU uh, is going to need to work on here. Now, they're going to be going up against Mississippi State, a team that's not really going to run the football at all. I still think they're committing way too many guys to the box and getting guys way too close to the line of scrimmage. Either way, you trust Derek Stingley in man coverage here. And this honestly is not a bad penalty. If you feel like you're getting beat for a long touchdown, which would have been an 80-yard touchdown, you pull the guy. This is a good penalty. He had a step on you, pull him. Don't don't give up the touchdown. Only give up the 15-yard penalty. Uh, this is not the NFL where it's a spot foul. And even then, uh, you want to commit that penalty uh yeah, it's pass interference. You, know, you can't grab a guy like that. So, yeah, you know, obviously Sting had a really good game overall, though. I mean, my goodness. Uh, we'll take this all day, every day. And um, he was also the reason why we got a touchdown. He was the reason why Andre Anthony got a touchdown. I love this. DB, throw your hands up as if you didn't do anything. All DBs do it. So now we're on snap three-ish, four-ish uh, of Mason Smith at defensive end. And I so now we get this snap here on first and 10. And we get a pulling guard here, and they're trying to run the football. And, God, this is a really good rep by Mason. It really is. Uh, I think you get end zone camera on, on this right here. Good pursuit by Joseph Evans and Neil Farrell to come in here and help make this play. And Ojolari gets credit for... Uh, half a tackle for loss, I think, here. Um, so here we go. They're trying to run this football to the outside. Once again, Mississippi State's not going to run the ball. Uh, so Mason just goes straight up against this tight end and sits in this gap and sees if this running back is actually going to come through this gap. Okay? He sees that this running back is bouncing, then he swims underneath and then it's starting to generate push and penetration here. Now, this gap needs to get filled by somebody. Maybe Mason was supposed to stay half a man behind and take this gap. But because we had good pursuit from the backside, it didn't matter. So that's just really good stuff right there, man. So this time he's lined up to the outside shoulder of the tackle. And the tight end is over here. And BJ is a little bit wider than what Mason was on the snap before. We bring uh, a safety into the box, and I, I hope we don't show single high like this uh, against Mississippi State. But either way, Cordell Flack continues his great season. So what if they gain a two-yard catch? So this is an exotic look. I like this from LSU. We're giving them a different look that they're not used to. Okay? So we move Mason Smith inside as a pass rushing DT. We got Jaquil and Roy. This is uh, Desmond Little. He played well versus McNeese State, and that way you move up the depth chart. And look, I'm happy for Desmond Little. Sony Fanua's out. Ali Gay's out. A lot of defensive ends are ahead of them are out. And since he played well against McNeese, you're going to get some snaps. So we bring this linebacker up here, and this is my favorite thing about this. Okay, The quarterback doesn't really know what we're doing. We're twisting B.J. Ojolari. Uh, around here okay and they actually picked this up pretty easy but we're still pushing the pocket and Jaqueline Roy continues his dominant season if it wasn't Andre Anthony it should have been Jaqueline Roy they got player of the game 
uh, our defensive lineman of the week for the SEC because he obviously forced that interception for Major Burns in the uh, in the first film study. But look, he just dominates his guard, and we we're getting a one on one against their guard, and this actually forces the incompletion. This could, and you see, he couldn't even step into this throw. He just does a good job not hitting that helmet and still forcing this incompletion. So here we go, Max Johnson. We broke down this run in the Corey Kiner film study. This is just too much penetration, but maybe TDP should have planted and just got up vertical. Uh, but still, it's just too much penetration given up there on first down. So we're backed up here, and obviously Max is playing really well. Here we go, second down. They're sitting back in the coverage. Um, and this is a really good job right here by Delhi. So, for a left-handed quarterback, we want the right defensive end to crash inside every time, okay? This is why. Because, Max, when that guy crashes inside, it gives you an easy rollout opportunity to your hand side. So, we want Max rolling left and, and making plays with his legs. Because here... This gives him the opportunity to make this guy miss and roll out and get a few yards here. It looks like bad protection, but it's not. We want the defensive end to lose contain to Max's hand side because he does have enough with his legs to give you some reasonable yardage, okay? So once again, way off balance here. 31 rush yards, 280 pass yards. Who cares? Uh, because once again, as we pointed out in the Corey Kiner film study, Play action still worked, even though we can't run the ball at all. Some of that is bad defensive coordinator play and bad run keys and pass keys from Central Michigan. I think LSU did get a little fortunate that McNeese in Central Michigan's defense was easy to diagnose. Uh, because, like LSU, they run very basic four-man fronts. Uh, this right here was one of my favorite reps of the night, okay? Uh, and, and there's a lot of reasons why. They actually back out of this into a three-man rush. And even though they dropped eight players on this play, we still had not one, not two, but three wide receivers open for a first down on this play. Okay? Let's go ahead and just run it at full speed. Max gets a perfect pocket. That's helped by the three-man rush. And we throw an absolute dart right here to Kayshawn Butte. Okay? Um very similar to the first play of the game, right? Where Max threw that ball and the safety almost intercepted it, okay? So you're going to get an end zone view here. This time, with Jack Besh, we actually chip the defensive end. And, and this is very interesting. So we get a chip here from uh, our slot receiver, even though he is technically the hybrid tight end look at this we get a chip here against their best pass rusher number one this is really good scouting right here by jake Peets. okay because harrison's their best pass rusher we don't want to give up a safety here so chipping helps guarantee that austin deculus is getting some help against a faster rusher as many of you know deculus struggles against these types of rushers and obviously with jack bash you know he's going to get out into his route quickly. He got two first downs doing this exact thing in our first film study, and boom. Okay, so if Max wanted this for a first down, he could have had it, okay? And instead, Max, once again, you know, you're locking in this long against eight-man coverage. It's oftentimes not going to work against a better defense, but this is still a really good throw, okay? Okay. Once again, I want you to see this from Jack Bash, okay? We're chipping to help Deculus with this end. Good scouting. That's good scouting, good work by all the analysts uh, on LSU staff to scout this and, and give Deculus some help. And boom, look at how quickly. I mean, just, just notice the speed of this, okay? We get a good chip, and, and just notice how quickly he finds the pocket deep enough for Max to throw and, and, and get this easy first down if you wanted it, okay? Now, once again, they have eight guys backed in the coverage, all right? We actually get a second receiver open, Deion Smith, that Max could have taken right there, okay? So this lets you know that Jake's route concepts are starting to get better, 
And he's starting to get wide receivers that get out of their break and get open fast. Instead, though, Max goes to Kayshawn, which is never a bad option. Feet in the ground. Look at how confidently he rifles this ball in, man. Uh, Once again, he doesn't have an elite arm, but part of the reason his balls fluttered in the first couple of games is that, like we've said in in our live streams, he's not, he, he wasn't playing confidently. And, and on that throw, he clearly did. That was pretty much the exact same route concept you saw on the first play of the game. I thought Cole Taylor had a better game as well. Uh, it does help that his snap share went down. Once again, more snaps for Jack Besh is better than less. And this time, uh, we actually, I mean, this is just such good offense right here. This is a crazy Deion Smith uh, foot tap catch. This is this was better than any of his catches. I mean, this is just ridiculous. But we actually do the same thing we normally do with Besh. We get a little bit of a chip on this end, and guess what? They perfectly disguise an unblocked blitzer, okay? So now this guy's coming hot, and here's the good thing about good quarterbacking, okay? This is a perfect call, all right? Now, first thing I like about Jake is... Against these slot uh, defenders, you notice he has widened these wide receiver splits, okay? So if they were to blitz, it's just a longer distance for this guy to travel. The second thing is when you run good offense and your quarterback is playing with confidence, he is sitting in the pocket and he's making quick reads, quickly, he reads on the Sarpio, he has man-to-man here against Dion. This is not a good proposition for Max Johnson in week one and week two because he wasn't playing confidently. He wasn't throwing the ball quickly. This would have been a back-breaking, hard-hit sack because he did not see him coming at all. But this is why playing confidently and playing fast actually is the safest thing for a quarterback to do. Have a little bit more of a gunslinger mentality than, than what Max normally has because in the past, he wouldn't throw this football. But this time he does... I'm glad he did, because if not, he would have been destroyed. But since you throw the football quickly, this defender doesn't hit you at all and uh, because he doesn't want to commit a late hit penalty. And that just goes to show you that Max is playing a lot faster. They called a good blitz because our wide receiver splits were so wide, it increased the distance uh, for them to go. And they actually called this uh, incomplete at first. I want you just to see this, Okay. It was actually a one-handed catch, okay? And his, you could just see, uh, for you snare drummers out there, his feet here were like a flam, okay? For those that don't know, a flam is a snare drumming technique where you go, it's just a da-da. And that is pretty much exactly what happened here. Deion Smith, his feet were actually going to land at the same time, uh, it looked like, uh, but he felt himself going out of bounds, and because of that, he just went da da with his left foot. Look at how quickly when his left foot lands, his right foot lands. Now, this is the craziest angle of this, okay? We talked about Deion Smith's body control in the first few film studies. Look at, look at this. I mean, I would ask you to try and do this with your body, but I don't want you guys to pull a hip muscle. So once again, uh, it, it, this is just a simple read right here. RPO, okay, Max sees all this space, so he's just going to throw this ball quickly here and and get it to Jack Besh, and this is legit the only bad rep of the season from Jack. He just drops this. It's, it, it, out of the ordinary, he's going to catch that every time. And look, that's five yards. We'll take this all day, every day. That's five yards right there, okay? And... Who's to say he doesn't make this catch and make this guy miss? Good job right here by uh, by Delhi right here. This is really good stuff. You want to ride? If this defensive end is, this is just domination. This is perfect, okay? We're riding this guy upfield, okay? So if we would have handed this football off, Ed does a good job turning this guy inside. So if we would have handed this football off, carry, boom, we know, uh, we know Kiner has his cutback angle right there. Or is that Josh Williams? Well, maybe with Josh, you, you don't know uh, if he can make this type of run. Yeah, I've yet to see him make this type of run on film, but it's still, either way, it's just good offense.
Oh, yeah. Ooh, ooh. Bad rep right here by Max. Bad, bad, bad. Okay. So, let, let's actually bring in uh, some pro football focus metrics. I do want to share this via my friend Max uh, Toscato, uh, one of the great LSU writers out there in the LSU blogosphere. Max has an issue holding on to the football too long. Uh, he had a few instances, uh, the, the instances of this in the first half, and this is just not good, okay? So he actually is given a really good pocket. We pick this blitz up, and this is good stuff. Now, once again, a lot of you want Corey Kiner to get more snaps, but this is a benefit of having Josh Williams, who has good pass-blocking chemistry with Max. You see his head, he immediately sees that this guy's coming off the edge, he also knows Delhi is a rookie freshman left tackle, so he knows that he's going to have to help on this guy. Good blitz recognition, and we pick everything up, okay? Now we get a delayed blitzer here, all right? It is hard for an offensive lineman to pick up a blitzer that's coming this delayed. I know I always say don't give up A-gap pressure, but here, you know, Ingram... Could he have seen this guy coming to pick this up? I don't know. Still, though, even if this guy is coming unblocked and you see him right under the barrel, I mean, he is staring, you're staring him down. Okay, so he's looking to see if Kayshawn's open right here. Okay, it's not there. And he does this whirling Derbyshire. Now, Russell Wilson has really made this spin move special. The only way this spin move is effective is if there's an end getting ready to sack you right now. It's nearly impossible to sack a quarterback like this, but even Russell Wilson against the Titans actually got caught on this spin move and almost had a safety that lost them the game in overtime. Here, he should not have done this, okay? Because the protection was good, all right? And you should read and know that if this blitzer is coming on a delayed blitz. He is deoccupying the space where Jack Besh is coming underneath. So, now you got to use your mind. You got to conceptually see this. If you see that this guy's coming, you know Besh is going to be open over the middle. So if he would have just sat in the pocket, we would have just had him right here. Instead, we're spinning in, and Deculus has gotten really unlucky with this a few times where he's pass blocking his guy perfectly, but Max just runs backwards into the pressure. And then we're doing this. And instead of a manageable third down, we got to complete this third and five. And once again, they're backing out and playing eight man coverage. And guess what? We pick it up really well. Deculus had a really good game. Look at this. This is domination and pass protection. Okay. Max has plenty of time to find someone. And then he hits Deion Smith right there. Now, once again, Deion Smith on every catch did something special. Made this guy miss. Look at this. Okay? This is just really filthy, okay? Oh, <sighs> baby. Oh, baby. Deion. I mean, these freshmen, do, do they know that these guys have families that these guys want to you know get jobs as as lawyers and car salesmen at, at, at some point in their life they good hustle by jack to come down here and help block i love that look at btj getting some good blocks down the field too gotta love it a lot better game for btj than uh the mcneese game where where he had the drops okay gotta love it baby okay and you get this reverse angle here Max in the pocket. Once again, good just protection all around. Uh, good chip right here. This end did a good job spinning up and, and getting close to Max. And look at where he actually is throwing this ball, anticipating that Dion is going to run into the space. Look at this. Good stuff. Max, a rough rep. It looked like he was, let's see, was he trying to find Kayshawn? I think he was looking at Kayshawn, and then he saw Dion running in this space. Look at where he is releasing this ball. People, this is really good for Max, okay? It looks like this is wide open, but imagine if you're in this position. You have to anticipate that he's still running. That's really special, especially considering 
his body was actually floating to the right. So he's kind of throwing across his body in a way, and he throws a rocket, okay? Once again, it's it's an easy throw for a second-year quarterback with four starts, but still, <laughs> uh, with the wide receiver he doesn't have much in-game chemistry with, that is really good stuff. All right, we get to here. Okay, they get another delayed blitzer here, and we pick it up. Once again, pass protection is really good. Let's see Max's footwork here. We're picking up the blitzes. I've got to say, I've got to say this. Brad Davis is doing a good job coaching up this group. Because last year, we just couldn't pick any of this up. I... <laughs> I think Josh kind of affected Max's footwork here. As a running back, you don't want to cut off your quarterback uh, in protection. If you're gonna if you're gonna come out and help on blitzers, get across. See, he kind of cut him off, so Max couldn't step up anyway. But still, we don't want this. We don't want drifting. We don't want Max throwing off his back foot. Okay. Probably a little too much uh, bull rush given up here by Delhi, but it's still not bad. This is not bad, okay? We're riding him up, and Max should have just stepped up into here and just thrown it away, but this isn't a bad rep under any circumstance, okay? It, it looks bad, but we're throwing a back shoulder ball, and, uh, okay, so we bring in Devonta Lee here, uh, take Dion out of the game, and, um, and this is a touchdown we broke down yesterday with uh, on the Corey Kiner film study. And I, I know TDP is in the game here, but once again, if you want to watch it, it just doesn't make any sense here that you would run a safety into a box against a team that that, that can't run. The, 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 the takeaway, though, is this should have been called back for a legal man downfield. The ref is right there. I don't think the umpire makes this call, though. I think the line judge has to make this call. We get very lucky there. Um, so what happens here is Chase and Hines thought Max was handing this football off all the way to TDP, and he's trying to get to the second level here to block this linebacker, and Max does a smart thing. He sees that this safety crashed hard. So the coaching thing you would have to tell Chase and Hines, uh, if you're Coach Davis, is when we're running these RPOs, you can't just sprint up field and go to the second level. Okay, I know it's natural instinct to get to the second level. And knowing how many RPOs LSU is starting to run now, more than likely the offensive line is told to not do this. But we committed this penalty, I think, uh, a, a few times. Get a little lucky. See, that's the 17, 18, 19, 20. He's four yards down the field here. Still, I'm happy for Devonta Lee to get his shine, baby. Let's go, D. Lee. Oh, man. <clears throat> so here we go. Huh? Ah, if you're watching this on a premiere, don't forget we're getting ready to fire up a live stream. Don't forget our live stream schedules, halftime and post game live streams for every game this year. Uh, let's see, we get a snap here. And uh, let's see. We're actually bringing a safety blitz here. Very interesting. And they actually run a screen. Oh, my goodness. This is the most. I, I remember this play now. This is the most impressive play I've seen an LSU defender make this year. Okay. Wow. Ha, ha, ha. So th there's a viewer. I, I got to shout him out, Dalton. He um, he has started the Cordell Flot for Heisman Train. And this is freaking incredible. Now, of course, fingers crossed, Cordell Flot had his worst game of the season against Mississippi State. Hopefully, we get a bounce back this year versus Mississippi State. I've never seen an LSU defensive back play a screen this well. Okay, this is uh, Patrick Queen versus Travis Etienne in the national championship game. Good. Okay, so let, let's break this play down. We're actually bringing a safety blitz. This is really exotic. I like this. 
Only issue here is we've got to, this has just got to be cleaner, okay? You, you don't want to run into your own guy on a safety blitz, and this kind of slows down Major Burns's role, okay? That's on Major Burns, especially if this linebacker's in coverage and man coverage. You've got to do better. You, you can't run into your own guy right there. Okay, so we get a little lucky there that they weren't throwing anything deep, and Baskerville did a good job replacing this. So, uh, the good thing about screens is there's no illegal man downfield penalties because if you throw the football to someone behind the line of scrimmage, it is perfectly legal for your offensive lineman to go down the field and block. And guess what? McElwain, of course, watched the film and saw that LSU had some good screens against McNeese State. The only issue, though, was the screens never worked when they ran it to Cordell Flott's side. He made a really good play on a screen against uh, McNeese State in the first half. So when uh, Central Michigan tried to screen in the first half, Jacobian Guillory was the play side defensive tackle, and he did a good job reading it, and that eventually helped uh, B.J. Ojolari get one of his sacks. Guillory was the reason why Ojolari got that sack. So we don't have any defensive tackles ret 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 retreating on the screen, and they have it perfectly blocked. So let's stop it right here, okay? We are screwed. Now, right now we're screwed. Four guys all committed on the screen. This tight end is mauling our linebacker, Mike Jones, who just got into this game. And they have two lead blockers plus a third guy on Cordell Flott. This play should go for at least 15 yards, okay? But let's bring it back. Cordell Flott reads it like he did against McNeese State, okay? He's trying to get outside. This guy over pursues it, so he goes underneath. Boom. So we get through this first block. Elias Ricks has contained right here. But Cordell Flott now has to find his way through these two blockers. Okay? Number number one, because he attacks it, he forces his running back to run into his own guy. Then Flott takes on this guy, spins underneath it, splits through both of these blockers, and by just jamming all of this up, remember right here, after this tight end is dominating Mike Jones, this is also a really good rep by Mike Jones. He doesn't give up on the play. He doesn't allow himself to get blocked, okay? And because Flotch slowed this up and he split underneath it, guess what happens? Mike Jones is also there to help. So Cordell Flott not only defeated one block, he defeated another block of a guy 200 pounds heavier than him, stayed on his feet, and still made this play. Un freaking believable okay now once again that was a nine yard gain but they had a perfect play call and what made it even more deadly is that we had a safety blitz coming from the backside as well so if flot didn't play it that way that would have made it one less person that could have eventually tackled him from that being a really deadly play uh goodness i, I i'm i'm really impressed by that the football iq the physicality, the speed, the the not giving up, and now we're in rhythm, okay? Or are we? <laughs> you see, we're, we're struggling lining up here, and this is what Mississippi State's going to see uh, on film. So we're communicating, seeing who's picking up this guy. Okay, what I don't want LSU to do uh, for the rest of the season is just sprint back and forth pre-snap, okay? So we're trying to pass this off and trying to get someone to pick this guy up so, once again, we're just all out of sorts here, okay, with this pre-snap motion. Last time we played a Power 5 team with pre-snap motion was UCLA, and UCLA averaged 7.4 yards per play overall. Ironically, on plays where UCLA didn't have pre-snap motion, they averaged less than 7 yards per play. On plays that they did have pre-snap motion, they averaged over 9. So, this is something we're still struggling with defensively, okay? So... Uh, Cordell Flott is obviously defending out here. We get a play-action fake. And once again, Jaqueline Roy just making crap happen. Going up against two blockers, and this is what happens, okay? All right. So Jaqueline Roy actually forced this sack, all right? And Guillory was the one who actually made the sack, and Ojolari got half a sack. Once again, nothing against BJ's performance. The, the SEC defensive lineman of the week was Roy. 
Okay? So what does Central Michigan do? Jaqueline Roy is taking this left guard to school all game long. He forces an interception. He's just playing really high football IQ. So to switch up the protection, they actually get the guard to go one-on-one against Guillory, and this center helps out on the three-tech, which is very rare. Normally, if you're outside shoulder defensive tackle, which is also known as the the, the three technique, normally it's just one-on-one versus a guard. The center says, look, left guard is going to dominate, so I got to come help right here. This running back also helps with Roy, and guess what? Roy is going up against three guys, so you notice what happens, okay? Mason Smith going up against a right tackle, a uh, good rep right here with the right tackle. But since Mace, uh, since Jaquil and Roy's taking up three guys, we're getting a one-on-one here with Guillory. And watch how smooth this rip move is. Boom! Okay, you'll, you'll get an end zone camera in a, in a second. But because Roy took up three guys right there, Guillory was able to go one-on-one against their right guard. And then Ojolari gets a chase down half a sack. Okay? Once again, it's time to give Jaquil and Roy his flowers based on what he's done this year. This is obviously really good for Ojolari's confidence. We still haven't seen Pico Jolari in any game yet. Uh, You'll see it right here, okay? So just to show you, the three technique is the outside shoulder of the guard. So that's basically the same on both sides. So normally, if if you're a defensive tackle, if you're getting help as a three tech, it's normally coming from the tackle. This time the center gets a piece right here and then says, look, I got to help this. I got to help my left guard out. This guy's just getting dominated. So Roy is eating up these three blocks. And when you eat up those blocks, guess what? We're getting one on ones on the backside. And I want you to see this rip move. Okay, a swim is when the right arm goes over the shoulder, a rip is when this right arm goes under the shoulder. And watch this rip. Look at how clean this is. Boom. This is how you are taught to do it. Okay? It's like a magician. Now you see me, now you don't. Beautiful. Guillory's playing at a high level right now. And uh, yeah, here's the thing. Glenn Logan is healthy again. I don't know if Logan needs to get in this rotation. These defensive tackles for LSU are playing at such a high level that I, I don't want Guillory snaps to be taken away. Evans had a good game. Farrell is balling. Once again, it, it was all Jaqueline Roy, though. Jaqueline Roy, ladies and gentlemen, you high. Stand up. Show Jaqueline and Roy some love, okay? Now we get a second and 17, and this is actually another defensive rep that I think uh, the LSU coaching staff should really pay attention to, okay? Now, guess what? They rotate this guy in, and pre-snap, they had this guy as a wide receiver, okay? So they bring this fullback in to create numbers in the box to create a favorable running opportunity on a second and 17 okay so what lsu normally does and you hear me talk about this all the time on these film studies is they needlessly bring another safety into the box to help with the run okay i don't like that okay i'd rather major burns play off right because once again we want the other team to run the football it is a less analytically savvy play a run just doesn't generate as much epa per play any stat you want to use as a pass so we want to give them light boxes especially if our defensive tackles are balling the heck out okay also major burns is not a good player when he's closer to the line of scrimmage okay so this time major burns sees that they bring an extra guy in the box but we're still having two deep safety and we have one two three four five six guys going up against their six guys so guess what we should be dominated right we we because we don't have enough guys in the box no okay because i'd rather major burns sprint downhill okay and now he's coming downhill full speed all right whereas normally and well let's just go ahead and run this play okay i think lsu needs to do this the rest of the season okay the play was actually perfectly blocked right here okay but because major burns was able to not allow himself to get washed in the mush And because our our run fits were decent there, that's only a two or three yard gain and we'll take it all day, every day. So once again, we'll show you this, all right? They actually get a good block here on Jaqueline Roy, all right? 
they're trying to pull this guy around, and they double Roy, and this guard kicks out Ojolari. Okay, but notice th- the benefit of your safety not being too close here is that they don't get caught up in the mush. It allows them to read and react. Okay, so now they actually get this running back coming clean through the hole. Okay, but guess what? Because Major Burns is playing downhill, he's able to take the hit to him and boom, look at that fill right there. It's kind of the same thing LSU versus Florida last season before Eli Ricks' pick six. We didn't crash our safety into the box for the first time all game. And Todd Harris was able to go down and make the play for only a two or three yard gain. And then on the next play, the Eli Ricks pick six happened. So I hope LSU watches this tape. Look, Major Burns is loving it. And say, look, we don't need to, we don't need our safeties in the box to defend the run. By the way, even if he's not in the box and they get three or four, five yards on it, who cares? It's not an explosive play in the passing game. And when you play your safeties deeper, it's harder to get a more explosive plays in general. And you look at LSU, even though their defensive performances have actually gotten better these last two games, they're still giving up way too many explosive plays. You're looking at a chart here from our friends at CFB Numbers, and you look at the explosive play EPA per play, this chart shows you that we are still giving up way too many explosive plays. We are by far the worst in the SEC when it comes to an advanced analytics such as EPA per play. So once again, you see how wide he is, and uh, it, it it just forces Ojolari to line up a little bit wider, and it's also tougher to see the football when there's such a large human being right here. And uh, watch as Mason just goes to work. Just go to work, baby. Go to work, okay? Just swim over the top. It's such a difficult block. It's so hard to block that because it looks like this punch is so good initially. Boom. And it does look good, but it's so hard to block a swim if you lean. And that was the issue. And he didn't even lean that bad. And look at Mason's body, okay? He went on a strict diet. He's a lean 295. And look at how he just bends and still collapses this pocket. And he rips underneath it. It's just beautiful. It's a thing of beauty. And if you have a pure pocket quarterback that can't outrun anyone, you're just dead in the water. You really are. Okay, so Ed Orgeron brought this up in, uh, in the interview this morning with T-Bob and uh, Jacob. Uh, they do such a great job with the interview. And so we have Francione right here, and you just got a fair catch and make this catch, okay? Uh, it was a, it was a Peter call, and then uh, the ball. God, it looks like that bounced out of bounds, though, in all due fairness, and they get a generous bounce here. Okay? This is a ridiculous Malik Neighbors catch. I mean, my goodness. I, I, I had uh, someone get on me for, for not talking about Malik Neighbors' catch in the first film study. This is just ridiculous. Okay? They, they call a perfect blitz right here. Okay? And um, look. Sometimes, uh, and it's not even a blitz, we let this guy go unblocked off the play action. And if this guy is, I don't know, uh, uh, obviously a design flaw here. Yeah, you just got to hand that off. Uh, And then Max, of course, has just got to throw this away. Thank goodness he did. That would have been a safety otherwise. Such a tough hit to take. And this is just crazy. (laughs) Ah, ah, ah. look at that good stuff Malik I'm happy for Malik uh, to get healthy and get his opportunity because I mean not a lot of freshmen would be sitting out the first two games every time Malik Neighbors was the first to celebrate anyone Uh, if anyone made a good play Malik Neighbors was like the biggest cheerleader and I just loved that I love good teammates who put in the work and that's just filthy man Once again, if you were a single-digit number, you got to make plays like this. Has there ever been a wide receiver at LSU that wore number eight? I know Jack Hunt wore that, uh, but then he moved to safety. Was it Matt? Who are some of the other number eights? Queen. I'm just trying to think off the top of my head. Mikey Matuk, different sport. Alex Bregman. All right. 
So let's see what happens here on this third and six. All right. Oh, it's a pick six. Yeah, I, I mean, look. The first thing is Max's QBR staying at 95 after a pick six is really impressive. They'll let you know how good he played up to this point. Let's just go ahead and show you the end zone camera. So Coy and Max obviously sorting this out here. So Jare gets in, Malik, we got uh, the backup receivers in. And, and Jordan said that Coy made the right move to sit in this zone. And Max just threw it right to him. Uh, it's just miscommunication. Just got to clean that up. So, we're going to have to cut this short because if you're watching this on a premiere or on a Tuesday, you know we're getting ready to fire up a, a live stream. So, look, we, we don't have time to break down Nuss's film. His only completion was more because of the play design. We actually broke down. It was Jake's most beautiful play design, actually. Uh, we actually broke it down in our Corey Connor film study. I thought Nuss was decent overall. Just really quickly on this play. Once again, we're just giving up too much penetration, and of course he panics, and once again, we don't like our quarterbacks playing off their back legs, and this is what I was talking about in my initial evaluation with Nuss. Uh, in high school, he could outrun every defensive end he faced. Harrison's one of the best run and chase defensive ends in the country, so I mean, that's that's just tough, and it just looks like it's a sack given up there by Deculus, and it really isn't. Um, like I said, Deculus... The pressures he gave up was actually kind of unlucky pressures. It was uh, stuff that he, that he couldn't do anything to control. But uh, we'll talk more about Ness in, in the future. But obviously the major takeaway from the film study was a little bit more defensive. But once again, Max Johnson is that guy. And we'll see how he does against, obviously, Mississippi State. And this week on the channel, obviously, we'll dive a little deeper into Mississippi State. Or if you're watching this video months from the time we released it, my major takeaway is, is is this. Cordell Flott's really playing good right now. Crossing my fingers, obviously. Uh, that was the most impressive play outside of, uh, of course, uh, the true freshman catches I saw. So, you know, just based on this, it, it's pretty clear that uh, there are some younger guys that are really, really balling out. And the, the, the irony is, I, I know I've brought this up a few times, but... Yes, B. Joe Gillari got the Defensive Lineman of the Week award for his two and a half sacks, and O. Gillari had a good game running and chasing, but we still have not seen peak B.J. O. Gillari yet. Right now, we are seeing peak Jaqueline Broy. He is really, really playing well right now, and um, and yeah, it, it, it's going to continue. He, he's been really, really, really good. Now we do get ready for Mississippi State, and what's very fascinating about them is what's LSU going to do? What's their defensive philosophy going to be? Will Rogers is playing really well right now. He is the last pure pocket quarterback LSU will play on their schedule. Every single quarterback, if they're healthy, um, are, are dual threats. So that is a bonus for the LSU pass rush that they are playing another pocket quarterback like they did Jacob Sermon here. And obviously, you know, the, 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 the second big giveaway is we see a good little run here from Kiner. Will the pass rush be able to get home and affect Mississippi State? As many of you know, last year against Mississippi State, our pass rush was really good. <laughs> Ali Gang had one of the best games a defensive end could have, and it still didn't matter. We still gave up 623 yards of offense because Mike Leach out-schemed us, and, or 623 passing yards. Mike Leach out-schemed us, and we didn't make any adjustments, as many of you know. So this could be a scenario where the pass rush still dominates, but Mississippi State is still able to uh, get passes off. And one final thing I'll say about Mississippi State is their wide receivers have looked a lot better on film than what I thought. His name slips my mind. No, uh, Makai Polk, number 10, is a baller. 
and uh, we'll see. You know, this will be the first time Sting and Ricks are going up against some some wide receivers that are really, really, really special. And uh, Polk is one of those guys. I still like Ricks and Sting against anyone they'll play this year, but still, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that matches up next week. Hope you enjoyed this film study. Obviously, comment uh, down below. Let me know what you think. As I always, well, I haven't said this in a while, but understand that, once again, I don't know the play calls for either team. These film studies are just my best guesses on what exactly is happening on the field. And, uh, yeah, uh, we'll continue the party. Let's go. Let's go. It is. Once again, comment down below. Let me know what you think. It is. Our, our, LSU, boom. Oh, we're doing some chicken Alfredo tonight. Let's go.